And this is actually the women's t-shirt. I haven't offered this as a PDF yet. I'm going back and making some of my original patterns PDF um, as well as the new ones going forward. And what I've decided to do is make the margin around the paper half inch. Initially, I did two sizes of PDF. I had the US paper size, and then I, and then I had the A4 paper size for European size paper, which is a little bit thinner and a little bit taller. And I've decided instead of doing that going forward, I'm going to just do a half inch allowance around each piece. That way, you don't have to worry about which um, version you're downloading and printing out, so you won't make a mistake and print out the wrong version. The other nice thing about half inch um, allowances is it gives you an option to fold them under instead of trimming them. My patterns have a dashed line around the perimeter of each piece where you connect them, so it makes it really easy to line everything up. Some of the PDF versions have just little marks in the corners, which is less intrusive, but it's also a little bit harder to get um, all those corners to match up across rows and then when you put your rows together. So I just want to show you this one right here. You can see I've got each piece taped in the center. So one little piece of um, tape like that. And you can see on this row I folded the paper back. Okay, and then I lined up the dashes. And one thing to keep in mind, you know, when you get your pattern printed, don't spend time trimming around all the pages. You don't need to do that. All I'm doing is folding back or trimming the right edge of every piece because then you have a shelf to support the seam between the pages and it makes it more durable plus you're cutting or trimming half the time. So that's one row and you'll also notice, let me just show you, the um, rows are labeled letter number. So row four, the bottom row, the, the, the numbers go across and the letters go vertically. So then the row that's right above it, I've already put together four of the pieces. And in this example, I trimmed. In case you can see, it's trimmed, not folded. But I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to do it either way. All right, so my next piece right here. So see my C3 is gonna connect to B3. And let me just show you how to fold first. So what I like to do is put it face down. Okay, and then I see peek at the line and I fold so I'm exactly on the line. Okay, so I don't crease the whole thing. I just go across and sort of finger press so that I'm making my crease right on the line across the whole piece. And then I'll go back and flatten the paper between where I finger pressed it initially. And that just, that's very quick. Okay, so now I can take this piece and line it right up with my B3 with my C3, like that. Anyone who's taken my class knows I tape it like I mean it. So like if I'm doing pattern adjustments and chopping patterns and adding things or taking things away, I like to cover the whole seam with tape. Now, I, have, I started out doing that when I was putting together my very first PDF and I realized if something goes awry, you've got all that tape on there and it's really a pain to take apart and fix. What I like to do now is I line it up and then I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape, maybe an inch, and I'm just gonna tape it in the center. Okay, just like that. All right, so I'm just lining my ruler up with the dash lines and then I'm just gonna trim it. All right, so here's my trimmed page. I'm gonna attach my A to my B. Okay, so it looks like that. I'm gonna put the one piece of tape. Now I have two rows that are ready to put together. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to trim the bottom edge of my three row. Okay, almost done just pulling it towards me as I trim. All right. All right, so now I've trimmed that bottom row. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to lay them right next to each other. What can happen when you're trying to 
put your rows together is across a row you might have been a minuscule amount off when you taped each piece together to form the row. So what happens is when you go to put the row together, it may work out that one of the pieces just does not want to match up. Okay, so I'm starting in the middle of my row and I'm lining up that middle piece. Okay, and I'm just going to put a little piece of tape there to hold the two rows together. All right, so now I can work out in each direction. So now I can make sure that my, my C row and my B row match. And the cool thing is, if it's slightly off, I can just pivot my page that little bit, see like this, just a little bit to get it to match up exactly because I haven't nailed anything completely down with Scotch tape yet. So see how I've gotten that to match up really easily. I'm going to put a piece of tape on the intersection and then I'm going to do this first, my A's and B's. I'm going to put those together. All right, so see how it makes it very easy to get it accurately taped together. You can see that my all of my side seams over here match. Um, my waistline matches. Everything matches perfectly. And then I'm just going to go in the other direction. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing and that allows me to um, make sure everything is together before I really solder it down with scotch tape. If you have any questions about assembling a PDF, please post them below.